What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to color clouds with Copic markers. Now when I draw clouds I don't use any guidelines so we won't need a pencil unless you the artist you need a pencil and you rely heavily on your guidelines that's totally fine but for this video I'm not going to use any pencils or guidelines and when I color clouds I like to do it in two different ways one way I color clouds is when I utilize the colorless blender so it involves a white color so that's one way of doing it and the other way I like to color clouds is by using solid colors so in this video I'm going to show you how to do it in both ways but before I do, I'm going to run down the supplies you're going to need for this video. Now, like I just said, I'm going to utilize the colorless blender for this video. And I'm going to use the Ahuhu brand colorless blender. You can also use the Copic marker brand. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a colorless blender. I'm also going to use a series of gray Copic markers. I'm going to use C1, C2, C3, C5, C7, and C9. So those are the Copic grays that I'm going to use for this video and that's one way of doing the clouds. So let me show you the other color combination you're going to need. So for the solid color clouds you're going to need BV02, BV13, BV04, BV17, and BV08. And as you saw over here, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but I had a Prismacolor marker in that pile. Now the ink that this marker lays down is equivalent to the BV02. The reason I have this Prismacolor marker is because I'll be laying down a large area for the solid color clouds. And the Prismacolor marker name and color is 144, PM144, name is Cloud Blue. And to me it's like a substitute to the BV02. So this will help me lay down a large area and this marker actually has a brush tip so I can blend. So you're going to need both of these two for this video. Or if you have this as a Copic original marker, that'll work too. But as long as you have something that lays down a large area and so you don't eventually run out of ink, you're good. But with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so let's start drawing the clouds with the white on them. So we're going to set these aside for now. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my colorless blender and I'm just going to color over this entire area just so my other markers have a layer to work on top of. All right, now that you got that nice and wet, we're ready to begin adding the first coat. Now, when we're drawing these clouds, I like to work dark to light. So the purpose of us having to apply the dark color first instead of doing light to dark we're actually going to map out the shape of the clouds first. That's what we want to do with the dark marker. So you can take either your C7 or your C9 and do just that. And keep in mind that I'm not using any guidelines. I'm just actually drawing them and I forgot to mention that when you're drawing the shape of these clouds you can use like cartoonish wave like shapes like this and I'm gonna make a couple different layers of them like see I'm going like medium and then small medium then small and possibly large however you want to look at it but I'm gonna try to mix up the pattern of the waves so like I'm going to start off small, then go work my way up to a big wave, like so. Alright, so we're going to put that away for now. And now we're going to take our next darkest color. And I'm just going to try to blend. And when you're working dark to light, it's also a good idea to uh, apply your dark marker all at once. Like say, what I did with the C9, we're pretty much gonna do with it. We're pretty much gonna do the same thing to every other marker, so that way we can only use it all once. Like say, I got my C7, and I'm gonna try to use it all in one go. Okay. 
Okay, so we're gonna put C7 off to the side for now. We're not gonna put it away just yet. But now we're gonna grab our next darkest color, which is my C5. And just try to blend everything. Because once you grab your C5, everything starts to get a little bit more lighter. Alright, and now we kind of see a little transition going on. You most likely see it over here in this area, but we can still continue with what we're going for. We can go with our C3. Alright, and now we're going with our C2. And this is the part where we should be getting a little bit closer to the next line of waves. Or wave shapes rather. Or next layer of clouds. However you want to look at it. But you should be getting closer to it after you apply or while you apply the C2. Alright, and then we can attempt to blend it out just a little bit with our C1. But my C1 is about to dry out. So I'm going to have to use an alternative like the Touch Twin Markers. Might be a slightly might be a little bit darker than the C1 for Copic, but it's it's my plan B for now. All right, and now we can grab our colorless blender again, and this time we're going to use the brush tip to blend everything back together. All right, and after reapplying the colorless blender, you should end up with something that looks like this. A smooth transition between the shadows towards the white. And now one more thing that we can do here is we're gonna take our darkest marker one more time. And you see how in these areas, the wave shapes that we drew in the beginning, they don't look very stiff. Or at least, however you draw it, it may not look stiff. Sometimes it will, but like, the way I have mine drawn here, they don't look very stiff or sharp, really. So that's why, if your shapes look like that, you can just reapply those wave shapes to make them straight. Straight and pointy and making them taper at their tips. Alright, and there's my version of drawing clouds utilizing the colorless blender. So let me transition to the bottom of this page and show you how to do it with the solid color. Alright, so now we're down at the bottom of the page and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use my Prismacolor marker and just apply a layer of marker. So that way my other markers have something to work on top of. And that way it's easier to blend. So now that that's colored in, we're going to take our darkest color, which is my BV08, and make some wave shapes like we did before. And again, with these wave shapes, you can make them big and then small, small and then big, big, medium, small, big, little, medium, big, you know, mix up the pattern. 
for every line that you make. But they don't have to be a specific uh, pattern. Just do it however you want it. Now we're gonna take our BB-17 and start to blend and create some shadows. And keep in mind that we're gonna use every marker once. So we wanna apply it to every place necessary all in one go. Take our BV04 and do the next step. All right, so we're done with that marker. Now we can go to BV13. And keep in mind, this is the second to the lightest. So you want to get a good area of this marker ink down while also blending it with what we already put down. All right, and then now comes BV02. So this is the marker that we use to blend everything back to what we put down at first, the base tone, which was the Prismacolor marker. So it's a possibility that we may need to add the Prismacolor marker instead, but we can use this marker for now to blend back in. Because it has a brush tip. I guess I was right. We do need our prism color because some way, somehow, this BV02 is a little bit different than the prism color marker. So that's why I gotta use the prism color marker to blend everything back together. So I might need to go over top of that. I need to go in a circular motion too to get some good blends. So before I finalize everything, I'm just gonna go back with my BV08 and try to sharpen these, um, and try to sharpen these uh, wave lines that we made in the beginning. You know, like we did up here. Just give these a little taper. And that's how you color clouds with Copic markers. But I'm not finished with the video yet. What you can do to get a super cool effect, since this is a solid color and it's nowhere near white, I'm gonna take a white colored pencil, or if you got a white gel pen, you can use that as well, and you can make raindrops. Like so. Just flick up in a certain direction. Make sure they're all in the right direction. And there, you got a stormy sky. But let me zoom out so you guys can see both of the clouds. 
And there you go, that's how you color clouds. One with it being a transition to a white from a dark gray, and another one being a solid color relating to a blue violet. With in addition to adding raindrops, as a super cool effect. But a list of the markers that I used in this video will, hop, will pop up somewhere on the screen if you want to try this out for yourself. But if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you guys in the next video.